What's up YouTube? It's Mark Gant and welcome back to Swamp and Snomp. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about one of the questions that we get asked more than probably any other question and that is what do we do once we shoot some wild game? Do we butcher it ourselves or do we take it to a butcher to uh, have it processed? And the truth is that we do both but every now and then I do enjoy butchering it myself and I shot a doe last week. It's been in the cooler um, since then and I'm going to pull out some of the quarters right now, butcher them up and show you some of the cuts that I like to do when I butcher it myself. Shout out to Big Ed's Butcher Shop in West Palm Beach. He's a great guy. He does a great job and he has really good prices. You can take a whole deer to him and depending on what cuts you're going to get, you're going to spend anywhere from like 60 to 100 bucks uh, to have a deer processed. He packages it all up in, you know, little styrofoam things with saran wrap on them. It looks just like it came out of the grocery store. Um, he does all kinds of sausage. He'll do pretty much any cut you can think of. Um, and you know, it's just a really easy way to deal with it. If you don't have the time to do it yourself, we just take it over to Ed and he gets it done pretty quickly for us. So since Danny and I have already killed a couple deer this season, our freezers are looking pretty good. Uh, so really with, uh, with the meat that I'm butchering today, I'm trying to fill some gaps in my freezer of different kinds of meats that I don't have a lot of. One of the meats that I probably use more than anything is just simple ground venison. Uh, cause you cook pretty much anything with it. You know, spaghetti, picadillo, like all kinds of stuff. So in our household, we use it more than anything, and we're actually almost out of it. So the majority of this deer is going to go into the grind, but there's still going to be some uh, some interesting cuts that I'm going to get out of this. And for each piece that I'll be uh, butchering, I'll talk about some of the other cuts that I sometimes do as well. So today I've got a neck, I've got a front shoulder, a hind uh, quarter, uh, a back strap and the heart. So for most of this, a simple boning knife is gonna work great. Uh, it's a little pointy so that you can get up in there and get around the bones uh, quite easily. Uh, but really, any knife that you have uh, that you feel comfortable with uh, will do the trick. Just make sure that it's sharp because uh, dull knives cause accidents. Make sure you got a real knife, uh, knife real sharp knife. Okay, so, here we have the neck. And as I mentioned, uh, there's a few different ways that you can uh, prepare all these different pieces. The neck is a really easy one. A lot of times I just leave it whole and I package it up uh, and put it in the freezer. And I'll show you how I package it later on. Uh, but this one, um, you know, you can either just leave it whole and it makes an excellent roast. You put it in the slow cooker. Um, and it works really nicely. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll just cut out the bone, you know, just go right in there, cut the spine out of it, um, and then wrap that up so that you have a boneless roast. Uh, but in this particular case, I need, like I was mentioning, I need a lot of ground meat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start cutting pieces off of it um, that are gonna go into my grind pile. And when you're making a grind pile, it's really easy because you can literally just start cutting into it. It doesn't even matter because you want it to be in small chunks anyway um, so that you can uh, fit those little pieces into your grinder. So I'll just start cutting pieces off, breaking them down into smaller pieces and throwing those into the grind pile. So obviously uh, down on the um, the bottom end here of the spine, you'll find the esophagus, uh, and it's you really can't miss it because it's like this tube uh, that actually is structured very similarly to the tube that's on the end of your grunt call, and that's why grunt calls are made like that. Anyway, you want to cut that out of there. You can also see these little darker spots. These are little glands and those are all kind of embedded into that fat. And you don't want the glands uh, in your, um, your 
your grind. So I'll just go through and I'll cut out all these really obvious uh, chunks of fat that have these glands in there. Throw those away. And the esophagus, throw it away. So once you've cut most of the meat off of your neck, this is basically what you end up with. There's still a lot of meat on there um, that you really just can't get off with a knife unless you're going to take hours to do it. So instead of throwing this away, uh, this is a great piece to use uh, in like a stew um, or a oxtail soup is a great one that you can do with this. Um, so you definitely don't need to throw this away. I can understand that some people don't want to deal with it. Personally, I like to use everything. So I'm going to put it into my bone pot because at some point I'll either uh, boil that down to a stock or I'll use it uh, together with my shanks to make a stew. It's probably worth mentioning though that if you live in an area where chronic wasting disease is prevalent, uh, probably not a great idea to uh, boil this down and eat it because that disease tends to congregate around um, the brain and the spinal column or the spinal cord. And since the spinal cord goes right through this, uh, probably not a great idea to eat this unless you've actually had chronic wasting disease testing done on your deer and you know that it doesn't have it. In Florida, we've never had any cases, so it's perfectly safe to eat that. All right, next up, we have a front shoulder. When it comes to the shoulders, there's a few different cuts that I like to get off of it. Um, and like I said, the majority of this is still gonna go into the grind pile, but I do like uh, having the shanks for a, uh, for a slow cooking meal. It's so good. So you can separate this joint right here and go in, clear some of this meat out of the way and find that joint and you can start working it apart. Some people throw these away. <clears throat> you can also cut the meat off of the bone and throw that into the grind pile, uh, which is probably what I'm actually gonna do. But if, if uh, you wanna have a really nice meal, you can take these shanks, take all four of them off of your deer, because Florida deer are pretty small, and you put those into the slow cooker for like eight hours, and all the tendons and all that stuff just turn into this like gelatinous, gravy-like substance, and the meat is fall off the bone tender, and man, it is good. But, like I said, I need meat for the grinder. So I'm just simply gonna go through, cut all the meat away from the bone. <clears throat> and there's another bone. I can go in the bone pile, because we're gonna boil that down and get some good stock. All right, at this point, now you got your shank taken off. There's a couple things you can do. One, you can leave this whole and uh, just wrap it up, freeze it, and this will make a nice roast. If you want to have your friends over for dinner and you want to do a nice big roast, uh, a front shoulder works quite well. Uh, the hind quarter works even better, uh, but that's one thing that you can do with it. Uh, you can also just cut it up and throw it in your grind. So basically all I'm doing right now is I'm deboning this shoulder and as you can see I've got fat, slimy fat in my hand. You basically want to try and cut off as much of the fat as possible, like here's some more right here. Um, and even though your, your ground meat, you want it to have fat, um, this, most of the fat you're going to find on wild game um, is, is going to have this like waxy feel to it when you eat it and it's unpleasant. So we try and cut as much of it off, and then we're going to add some pork fat later on. Next up, we have the hind quarter. Now, the hind quarter has lots of different cuts of meat. You can do so many different things with it, and honestly, it is my favorite part of the deer. If somebody shot a deer and they said, do you want any of it? What piece do you want? A lot of people would say backstrap, but I would take the hind quarter. There's just so much good meat on there. Now's a good time to mention that on all these pieces I've been working on, I've been rinsing them off before I start uh, started filming, 
and and just cutting away some of the like this slimy membrane stuff that pretty much all the deer meat's gonna have uh, surrounding it. So you want to cut that stuff off before you get started. Um, it doesn't taste good. It doesn't necessarily taste bad if you're putting it in a grind, but you don't need it on there. So I'm gonna peel all that stuff off, and then uh, I'll show you what I'm gonna do with this one. Uh, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna separate the shank. There we go, a deboned shank. Now we have this big honking piece of meat. Um, and as I mentioned before, you can keep this thing intact and just do like a big roast. Uh, if you wanna have your friends over, this is a pretty impressive piece of meat. Um, and it's thick enough that when you roast it, you're gonna have, you know, you can really do that medium rare and have those red parts in the middle and it's absolutely fantastic. But that's not what we're gonna do because my ultimate goal here is to get meat for the grind, uh, but the hindquarters are also a wonderful place to get jerky meat because there's lots of large muscle groups uh, and that's exactly what you want to make jerky. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just going in through the, the creases that are in between these muscle groups and just trying to uh, cut all the meat off in whole muscle groups. All right, now to do some jerky cuts. This piece right here is a wonderful piece to make jerky with. I'm gonna cut away this smaller muscle group right here. And that can go into the grind. All right, so for, for the jerky, what we want to do is like remove all this stuff, all this fat and all this other meat around the outsides. Throw that right into the grind. There's some silver skin on this side. We're going to cut that away. Basically what I'm trying to accomplish is just having a piece of meat with nothing else on it. So I'm just kind of carving away a thin layer of the meat and all the fat and all that stuff that's on the outside. Now all I'm doing here is I've got a thin little strip of meat that has that silver skin on there and I'm just cutting as thin a, sl a slice off the top of this slab of meat as I can. So as you can see, cut a little bit off here. Now we have a beautiful piece of meat, nothing else going on. And you can see, I don't know how clearly you can see that, but you can see the grain of the meat goes like this. And you wanna cut, diet. you wanna cut perpendicular to the grain of the meat when you cut um, jerky strips. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be like exactly perpendicular, but you want to be crossing it. You definitely don't want to be cutting along with it. It's going to make it really tough jerky and it's pretty unpleasant. Now I personally like really big pieces of jerky, so uh, I'm probably going to cut long strips like right along here. And what I like to do when I cut this jerky is I like to cut as diagonal as possible because that way I'm going to get the most surface area and I cut these about a quarter inch thick. Look at that. And that is going to make an awesome piece of jerky. There we go. Some beautiful pieces of jerky meat. I'm going to do the same with the rest of these pieces, cut out the biggest single muscle groups that I can, cut all the stuff off of it, and then slice it real thin just like that. All right, there you have it. Beautiful cuts of nice meat with no tendons or anything in it, and it's probably about a pound and a half. That's what I got out of that one hind quarter. All right, so we've done the neck, we've done the front quarter of shoulder, and we've done the hind quarter. 
Now we're down to the smaller, easier bits. We've got back straps, heart, and tenderloins. So everybody loves a back strap, but one of the pieces of meat that a lot of people tend to forget about is the inner loins or the tenderloins. These are just absolutely beautiful pieces of meat and they're just so tender that you can literally just peel them apart. The meat is, is so tender. Um, so you can find these in case you don't know where they are. They're right in front of the hips on the inside of the body cavity. Um, and they're so soft, you can literally just grab them with your hand and pull them out. Um, and they'll usually tear right out in one piece, just like this. This one I kind of screwed up a little bit, but everything's still there. And these, along with the heart, are the first thing that I eat off of a deer. It's kind of a celebratory meal. So all I'm going to do with this is I'm going to slice these tenderloins into little medallions. And I'm going to put them in the fridge because I'm going to fry them up tonight. And all I do with them is just give them a light uh, coating of uh, flour or whatever kind of frying uh, batter or dredge you like to use uh, and some spices and that's all it needs. It is so tender and delicious. I absolutely love it. Just like that. And then the heart, I'm just gonna cut the top right off. It's mostly just like a lot of fat right at the top, so just cut that right off of it, throw it away. There you go, there's the heart. And then all you're gonna do is just uh, I usually just start to cut each of the chambers open, just like this. So you have just like the heart's wall uh, separated. Like that. And then I'll just go through and I'll start carving out like the inside here because you can see there's like all these little tendons and stuff that uh, help with the heart uh, maintaining its structure while it's pumping blood and we're just going to cut that stuff out of there so we don't need to eat tendons but the heart meat is, a, is meat that it's really not like anything else and it's something that people just they just kind of forget about it I guess and we're just going to cut away all this fat that's on the outside. The heart's sort of encased in a, a layer of fat. And we have these little delicious nuggets of heart meat. And all those pieces of fat, you can just throw that right into your grind. Okay, so we're just gonna slice the heart pieces in the little strips. That's just just the same as the uh, tenderloins. We're just gonna dredge them and fry them up. There we go. These are all the strips I'm gonna fry up tonight. I'm just gonna put those in the fridge and let that water drain out of there because the less water you have, uh, the better it's gonna fry up. Finally, we have the back strap. This is everybody's favorite piece. We're just gonna clean it up, take some of these smaller pieces of meat off the sides here. All right, so with the back strap, you got this long piece of silver skin on there. This is all tendon material. You don't want to have that. So what we're gonna do is cut it off. And there's a, there's a, a grain to the muscle and there's a direction to peel this off. I always forget which direction it is, but I think it's from the back. Pull it forward. So we're going to cut in right here where that silver skin is and get underneath it. Just grab a hold of it, see, and it just peels right off. Wish I'd gotten all of it, but I'm no butcher. I'm not very good at this. You can just honestly pinch it with your finger and start peeling. Very easy to do. And if you go from the other side, it starts actually 
peel up part of the meat. Um, so you want to make sure you do it from the right side, which is the back side, the part where it's skinnier. Once you've got the silver skin peeled off of the back strap, there's about a million different ways that you can uh, uh, deal with this meat. Um, you can uh, get a little extra right here. You can cut it into medallions, fry it up. Excellent way to do it. You can cut it into sections um, and grill it up like a steak. Uh, you can even slice it real thin and use it for some really fine jerky, uh, which I have done before. Um, but in this particular case, I'm going to cut it into one inch little medallion steaks. Um, and that's just very easy to work with on the grill, frying pan, whatever. Just like that. And that is a very delicious meat. There we go. And that's it, that's half of a deer. All right guys, so it's time to start grinding up all the pieces that we cut up and threw into the grind pile. Now as a grinder, I'm using a half horsepower Lem grinder. And as far as uh, grinders goes, if you're looking to buy one yourself, uh, the bigger and more powerful you can afford, the better it's going to be. Uh, I used to use a quarter horsepower and it got the job done, but it was really slow. This half horsepower just grinds right through stuff and really makes the process a lot more enjoyable. Now, if you don't want to spend the money on getting one of these, you could take your grind pile to a butcher and just have them grind it up for you. But they're going to charge you for that, obviously, and the amount that they're going to uh, charge you is going to vary depending on where you take it. So uh, I think it's definitely worth it to buy one of these. probably about 15 pounds of ground meat in this pot probably got another five or six right here so the last thing you got to do uh, once you ground up all your meat is mix in the fat and a lot of people will go buy uh, pork back fat or they'll grind up bacon and put that in with it uh, I used to do that but I actually found that this stuff right here that you can get at, uh, at Walmart it's a uh, Tennessee pride country sausage if you get the mild flavor it's like 70 percent fat there's hardly any meat in it um and it's just really easy you just buy some of these and throw them in and mix them with your meat and it uh gives that meat a, a little more um cohesiveness so it's a, a little stickier so you can like make it into burgers or whatever um normally i do about 20 percent of the meat uh, i put this stuff in there so if you have like eight pounds of deer meat put two pounds of this stuff unfortunately walmart was uh, running low so i only got two of them for a lot more meat so this batch isn't going to be um, quite as fatty but that's okay now that we got the whole deer butchered up all we got to do is package it and freeze it to do that what i like to do is i'll get some saran wrap i'll wrap the meat up in saran wrap press as much of the air out as possible and then i'll wrap another layer of uh, freezer paper over the top of it. I have found that if you package it this way, uh, you really don't have any problems with freezer burn. You can keep it in your freezer for well over a year as long as you pressed all of that air out of the packaging. So after all said and done, we've got like, I don't know exactly how many, let's see, one, two, three, approximately 20 packages of ground meat, three packages of back straps. I've got some. Um, jerky strips, and then I have that heart and tenderloin that I'm going to eat tonight. I hope that was helpful for you guys. If you have any questions on uh, different ways to 
butcher your meat or questions about how I did things today, just drop a comment down below. Make sure you hit that like button and that you're subscribed to our channel. If you want to support the channel a little bit more, go check out our Patreon page at www.patreon.com slash swamp and stomp or go check out our merch store where you can buy some cool shirts and hats, uh, including the shirt that I'm wearing right now, which is pretty cool. So thank you guys for watching and we'll catch you guys next time.